I'd like to begin the press conference, please. Uh, my name is Ian Thomas Ash, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and a member of this club. And it is my honor to be the MC at today's press conference. I will keep my remarks very brief so that we have as much time as possible for our speaker. Um, Dr. Clausen is here in Japan this time. Uh, her work this trip is concentrating on the condition of cleanup workers. Uh, and we'll let her speak more about that in a moment. Um, She's going to speak for about 15 to 20 minutes in English. Uh, for those people that um, need to have some Japanese help, there will be a PowerPoint presentation that will be mainly in Japanese. And at the end um, of her speech, we'll have time for question and answers. So the uh, PowerPoint is only in English, uh, but you have this uh, handout with uh, Japanese translations. Thank you very much for the invitation to come here uh, to Japan and to be able to speak to you. Uh, I want to speak uh, a lot about um, Chernobyl, 30 years, and Fukushima, uh, five years. Uh, so mainly in my talk, I will concentrate about the dogma on low-level radiation and the Chernobyl health effects, because we have studied Chernobyl uh, a long time, 30 years. And I will talk about the dogma that is supported by the Japanese and also by the international authorities, namely UNSCARE, WHO, ICRP, and IAEA. This dogma is only thyroid cancer in children is found because of Chernobyl. And there's no problem uh, under 100 millisievert for your health. Just smile. But after Chernobyl catas uh, catastrophe, studies show there is a rise of cancer, not only thyroid, but leukemia, breast cancer, and other cancers. And there is a rise of non-cancer diseases. And these non-cancer diseases exceed the cancer cases. Uh, Non-cancer diseases, for instance, on the blood system, stroke, heart attack, thyroid, endocrinological diseases, for instance, Basodo, Hashimoto, and diabetes, and Lenz diseases. And third, we have genetic effects, uh, for instance, congenital malformations, and rise in perinatal mortality, and rise in stillbirth. So my message for Japan is clear. We need systematic health checkup for all cleanup workers, not only the TEPCO ones, but all, all evacuees, all adults and children, and the population remaining in most contaminated zones, contaminated zones. Because uh, as epidemiologists, you can only find something if you look for it. So don't close your eyes. Uh, at first, I want uh, to uh, present you a small study done by Yamashita and uh, Shibata. And it compares the number of cancer cases and non-cancer cases in the thyroid organ. Yamashita and Shibata found uh, 62 cases of thyroid cancer, but 45,873 uh, cases of non-cancer thyroid cases. In a cohort, they studied of uh, almost 120,000 children from Ukraine, from Belarus, and Russia. At first, I want uh, to go now to, uh, with you through the cancer cases. Of course, we have cancer cases in cleanup workers, and there's a dose-related uh, increase in solid cancer, an increase in acute and uh, chronic lymphatic leukemia. We find uh, increasing cancer uh, cases in Belarus. Uh, there it was found uh, almost 60% rise um, in the province of Gomel, which was uh, much radiated, and in for Belarus overall, 40%. We also found the increase of breast cancer in the contaminated areas of Gomel and Mogilov in Belarus and Chernigov, Kiev and Jitomir in Ukraine, and an increase in leukemia in children in the contaminated areas of the Ukraine. 
There's a significant rise if the contamination is higher than 10 millisievert, a study done by Noshesko. And in Belarus, uh, the discussion, the scientific discussion was uh, very uh, pro and con. But uh, recently, Alfred Körplein from Germany, uh, he got uh, the, uh, the data uh, from Belarus and in his accountants he found out uh, that there was indeed an increase in leukemia in Belarus too, but in the uh, group of babies uh, between one and uh, zero and one years old right after uh, the accident in the first year. And then we have an increase in number of brain tumors for children under six years. This is a study done by Orlov and Sharevsky from Ukraine. Then the Chernobyl non-cancer diseases I go through now. We have the risk of cardiovascular diseases increased in non-radiated children. Priyajnuk in his study found out that 57.8% uh, uh, of the radiated uh, children um, uh, develop such a cardiovascular disease uh, versus 31% uh, uh, of the non-radiated. Other non-cancer cases. Chernobyl blood cells. Uh, Chernobyl uh, shows adverse effect in children's blood cells. Uh, Yevgenia Stepanova did a study on 1,251 children. Uh, she studied them from 1993 to 1998 in the region of, uh, region of Narodichevsky, which is, uh, was very much de con contaminated uh, in Ukraine. And the data shows statistically significant reduction in red blood cells and white blood cells in uh, the platelet counts and in hemoglobin and this with uh, increasing residential cesium soil contamination. There are many other studies uh, done by her on other organs but I want now to uh, go to the brain effects. Again a study group of scientists uh, from Ukraine from the Kiev uh, University shows that radiation severely affects the human brain and before these studies it was thought there was almost no effect. Uh, the pediatrician Niago and Loganovsky showed that there is a dose related cognitive and neurophysiological abnormalities be found in prenatally exposed children after the Chernobyl ex uh, accident. And this is uh, done by the uh, radioactive iodine. Uh, it's dependent uh, during the gestation age uh, on um, the amount of thyroid that was accumulated by the embryo. In the gestation age of eight weeks, uh, we find in the fetus uh, 20 millisievert, more than 20 millisievert, or 300 millisievert thyroid dose, which can be very quickly acc accumula be accumulated by a fetus uh, with a very, very small thyroid. And at the gestation ages of uh, 16 to 25 weeks, abnormalities also at doses more than 10 millisievert and 200 millisievert for thyroid dose, respectively. <coughs> now I come to the brain effects in adults in liquidator cells. Of course, the liquidators, uh, if you remember the, um, the pictures from Chernobyl, where the liquidators were working at uh, the roof of the reactor, they obtained uh, much more radiation. And Lovaranovsky again and his study group found radiation associated cerebrovascular effects. That means uh, people, the liquidators, get strokes. And this was obtained at uh, doses more than uh, 150 millisievert to 250 millisievert. And then uh, this study group also uh, showed direct uh, nerve cell effects on the brain. Uh, and they showed that the rate of neuropsychiatric disorders among personnel working since one, uh, uh, 1968 to 1087 uh, uh, and were irradiated above 205 millisievert 
um, they found new psychiatric disorders in 80.5% uh, and when the rate of the same continuity was uh, lower, again irradiated but below 257 millisievert, the rate of these disorders was 20% about. But still a much amount of, uh, of uh, very severe brain uh, diseases. When you see these liquidators uh, you, uh, and you meet them as a doctor, uh, you will see that they have very uh, hard cognitive uh, effects, like the, they, uh, their concentration is very bad, they forget everything very quickly, just like a, people that, a person that's old. Also, Loganowski calls it accelerated aging process. Uh, the liquidator cells, if we show, uh, look at that, uh, the main cause why liquidators died was stroke and heart attack. And the second uh, death cause was cancer. Yablokov, uh, a Russian uh, biologist, looked at studies on liquidators from the health registries in Obninsk in Russia and in Kiev, and he estimates that out of the uh, 830,000 liquidators, about 112,000 to 125,000 liquidators have died so far. And other non-cancer diseases are on reproductive health. We find an increase in stillbirth in southern Bavaria. Uh, southern Bavaria in Germany was not contaminated so much, but uh, again much more than North Bavaria. And we find an increase in stillbirth in Eastern European countries like Greece, Hungary, Poland and Sweden and also in middle European countries, but the effect is not so clear in Central Europe. Countries like Austria, Denmark, Germany, Italy, Norway and Switzerland. And then we find an increase in the perinatal mortality in Germany and Poland, corresponding to cesium contamination, and also an increase in congenital form, uh, malformations in Belarus, in Ukraine and Bavaria, again corresponding to the cesium soil contamination. And then we come to the genetic effects. In Berlin, Down syndrome uh, rose up. This is a study, a study uh, done by uh, Sperling. Then uh, the chromosomal aberrations in children of liquidators. The children were not directly irradiated, but their fathers. We found chromosomal aberrations. And then uh, uh, new studies show from Hagen Scherb that changes in the birth ratio of male and female newborn changed. Uh, less uh, female uh, babies were born. So this is really hard stuff. Uh, very, very many different health effects, cancer, non-cancer and genetic uh, effects. And we do not only know this from the Chernobyl studies, but recently, uh, the last 10, 15 years, uh, there were done many, many uh, new large epidemiological case control studies on radiation health effects. And these uh, case control studies show very similar um, results. So it is proven in these studies that even doses lower than 10 millisievert increase the risk of developing cancer, do damage to brain vessels or heart vessels and do change uh, genetic makeup. So the Japanese uh, scientist and doctor Yamashita is wrong with his estimations that low dose is not harmful. Indeed, low dose radiation is harmful. Now to convince you <laughs> again, uh, I want to show some of these uh, big epidemiological studies. At first uh, I go to the background radiation. Often politics uh, say, oh, background radiation is very natural, it doesn't do anything. But even background radiation causes adverse health effects. Cancer risk is rising. And here are the studies, some studies on background radiation. Uh, 
One study um, from 13 European countries, case, con study, uh, case control studies, show that a 16% elevated risk per 100 becquerel per cubic meter. Smoking uh, is an independent risk factor and there's no threshold. So uh, radon causes 9% of the lung cancer and 2% uh, mortality lung cancer. And of course we have more background radiation studies, one from Great Britain on child leukemia, and they found a 12% elevated risk per millisievert for bone marrow doses. Uh, we can uh, say, summarize it, uh, 15 to 20% of all cases of child leukemia uh, derive from background radiation. So it does something. And also medical diagnostics do something. Medical diagnostic cause adverse health effects proven in epidemiological studies. So therefore we as doctors have to be very careful, use only medical diagnostic when it's really necessary. Of course then we have to use it and we must use it because it helps to save a lot of lives. Here's a study um, which looked at 355 patients in the years 1985 to 2002. And uh, the result is that one CT, sometimes CT can have a relatively high radiation, a CT with 50 to 60 millisievert may increase the risk threefold of developing leukemia or brain tumors. And there was no confounder a nuclear medicine. An Australian study looked at 10.9 uh, million uh, patients and they found that one CT increases the cancer risk by 24% and each CT that follows increases uh, the risk uh, by 16%. And the younger a patient is, the higher is the risk. And another uh, low-level uh, radiation source may be uranium mining. In East Germany, uh, we had a very huge region with uranium mining, and from this region, uh, a study was done with almost 60,000 workers. And uh, it was found a causal relationship between the whole working uh, time and the cancer risk. 24, uh, 21 increased cancer risk, per work level month. And another cohort studies from, uh, from 11 uh, cohort studies, uh, an overview was 65,000 men and 2007 deaths due to cancer. And again, a linear causal connection is found between radon exposure and lung cancer. And of course, long term exposure shows greater effects than short term. Lung cancer from radon uh, causes 40% uh, of the lung cancer uh, in mine workers and 10% in the general public. And there, are, uh, these slides are just to show you where uranium mining is done. Uh, and we also have studies from there, like Namibia, Canada, India, Australia, and USA. And now I come to the nuclear workers. A study was done uh, in 15 countries with almost 600,000, uh, looking at 600,000 workers in 154 factories. And there, solid tumors uh, uh, were found uh, to be at a 97% uh, elevated risk perceived and leukemia 193% uh, elevated risk perceived. So we care the result is that one to two percent of overall mortality among nuclear workers uh, is caused by radiation. There are also studies, uh, new studies now on nuclear workers uh, and the risk of heart attack. And this is a uh, very new study from the famous uh, cancer scientist Mark Little. Um, he looked at different studies, uh, non-cancer uh, effects of radiation make an increased risk of strokes, of heart disease, 
of digestive disease or cardiac, this is Lenz uh, disease, and damage to the nervous system. So he uh, agreed that what we find in Chernobyl and in the Chernobyl uh, liquidators is uh, also found in all these other studies um, on nuclear workers. Now I'm uh, ending my presentation. I thank you for your attention and you, can may, uh, you may ask questions to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Clausen. Uh, I'd like to first open the floor to working press members for questions. If you have a question, please come up to the mic, state your affiliation, and please keep your questions uh, brief. <coughs> Anthony Rowley, Singapore Business Times. Sorry I came in a little late, so I may have missed some of your early remarks, but how great are these dangers in the Fukushima region and in Japan relative to what they are in the European or the East European regions. I mean, I, I, I just don't, didn't hear you talk about that. And you say that, you know, that, that, that um, in all, for all nuclear workers there are dangers. Um, but where there's been a nuclear disaster such as in Chernobyl or in um, Fukushima, is the, is the danger very much greater in those areas? Uh, so coming to the first question, how great is the danger in Fukushima? Uh, we have to find it out how great it is. Um, and uh, to be able to find out how great this danger is, it is necessary to make good epidemiological studies. Uh, a good epidemiological study needs as a base good data. So uh, the first thing uh, that uh, the Japanese government is responsible for uh, to um, make up a good database. A good database would include in Fukushima uh, uh, regularly health checkups for all the clean workers. All the clean workers, uh, clean up workers means not only the one that uh, work at the reactor, but also the clean up workers that work uh, at the decontamination zones. And as uh, when I uh, talk to some uh, journalists and people here in uh, in Fukushima, I heard that usually uh, in the contamination areas, uh, the uh, the batch uh, for measuring uh, radiation uh, is not used. At least it is not controlled. So no data about how much radiation these de uh, decontamination workers uh, get. Only. Uh, how much uh, radiation they get in uh, uh, in the works around the uh, nuclear reactor of Fukushima. So we need good data how much dose they receive, all the workers, and then all the workers have to go to a health checkup. In um, in the um, after the accident of Chernobyl. Uh, different registration registries uh, were found and study uh, groups were made in uh, in Moscow, the Koshatov Institute in Obninsk, in Minsk, in Gormel and in Kiev. Uh, here in Japan we have only the Fukushima University and the Fukushima University only does studies on thyroid cancer. And this is very very narrow but we have to widen up uh, our view and uh, we need data from the cleanup workers from all the evacuees from all the children that e were evacuated and from all the people that still live in contaminated zones so the uh, Japanese government is responsible uh, to make up this data and up to now they did not do it and I think it is a shame it's a real shame this country Japan is a wonderful country with wonderful great scientists good medical doctors they have the potential to do all this they really have the potential and they can do it and they have enough devices to uh, to check up to make checkups and they do not do it and this is uh, just a shame so uh, to be able to find out about the risk it's, uh, we need all these good databases and then in the health checkups we find something or we, find no we do not find anything. But uh, this is a way uh, to make an approach. 
Any more questions? Hello, uh, Mary Corbett from Medical Globe. I was wondering if you've had the opportunity to look at data from Okayama University because we had speakers, doctors there uh, have been studying. They're actually even narrow, I think, focused on thyroid and children. However, they've seen a, a tremendous spike in some areas which the government attributes to wider screening. Um, okay, so that brings me to a second question. I hi do highly recommend, I think we've got um, introductions if you're interested. Uh, but quick question, um, if, if the diagnostic tools available are quite invasive and quite high risk, then for example, uh, for thyroid cancer anyway, uh, it, dogs, uh, canine detectors have proven to be extremely effective, 95, 96% hit rates. Um, do you think that is a viable alternative? Is, I know in the United States they're, they're starting it in many areas, not just for thyroid, but because I know that uh, screening itself is high risk for some of the children especially. Um, I uh, talked, uh, uh, I visited uh, Professor Tsuda in Okiyama University. Uh, this also was also one of the reasons uh, that I came here because I wanted to really uh, dis be able to discuss with him. Uh, and uh, the screening uh, in Fukushima, uh, the Fukushima province, is done in an area where there is a nuclear accident. It's not done in an area uh, where there is no nuclear accident. So we know that uh, there, uh, there was this accident. We know that radioactive iodine came out of uh, the reactor. And uh, third, we know that usually no thyroid, uh, no um, uh, calcium D tablets were taken in. So we know in this area there is a clear risk. And I think it is, uh, it is right in this risk area to make a screening. This is uh, this has to be done. So I think um, uh, it's good that it uh, has has been done, and um, the way the the doctor do is uh, there is a first ultrasound, and only if they find something in ultrasound, then they do f uh, fine needle uh, biopsy. And uh, of course, when you uh, make fine needle biopsy in the child, you have to do an anesthesi. <laughs> For, for the child. Uh, in Chernobyl, uh, the ultrasound uh, devices were not there in the beginning. And the people uh, came only, uh, the mothers, uh, to the doctors there when the uh, thyroid became sick or the lymph nodules or so, when they had clinical, uh, clinical signs of the uh, uh, of the disease, and we know that um, radioactive iodine makes thyroid cancer. So I think it's uh, uh, it's very um, responsible to do this this screening there. But uh, I wouldn't advise to do screening all over Japan. Uh, can you briefly remark um, about the use of the question, the second part of the question about um, the use of dogs? A canine detection? Um, I didn't. I, I. I don't know the use of dogs in what kind of detection. They can smell cancer. Yeah, they can distinguish. Uh, I think in Europe and the United States now they have dogs. I have never okay. heard about that. We'll I have cannot to have a, comment a press on conference that. about that in the future. <laughs> uh, any more questions, please? Uh, if no one else has another question, first, does anyone else have a, a question? If not, we'll have. Okay, please. I'm just trying to understand how widespread the risk is. I mean, you, you talk here of cases of prenatal mortality in Germany, in Poland, congenital malformation in Belarus, Ukraine, so on and so forth, and Down syndrome in Berlin. All those are related to the Chernobyl incident. Mm -hmm. The Chernobyl incident, of course, was far worse, I believe, than the Fukushima incident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is the risk of a much more diffused impact in Japan there? In other words, in Korea, for instance, or in China, how widely is this low radiation level likely to spread? It's, it's a very uninformed question, I'm afraid, but I don't know whether it's we're just talking about Japan or we're talking about neighboring countries too. Uh, uh, 
We are talking about uh, Japan here. Um, the radiation uh, plume um, from Fukushima uh, went twenty uh, percent uh, to uh, to Japan um, islands, but six eighty uh, percent into the ocean. And uh, so this is a big difference to Chernobyl. And the Chernobyl reactor was burning 10 days and the clouds uh, came up very high and then the clouds went and went and went thousands of uh, kilometers and then with the rain they fell down. But uh, in the f uh, Fukushima accident we have a different kind of uh, an accident uh, with a meltdown, a radioactive meltdown. Uh, and most of the radioactive went in the Pacific Ocean. And uh, for this uh, sort of accident, uh, it, uh, there's a must to do um, scientific studies on the aquatic uh, life uh, in the ocean, I think. Uh, uh, is that the right word in English? I'm, I'm, I'm German. <laughs> So uh, I am waiting for, um, and I hope that such studies will be made uh, on the life in the in the ocean, in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, on one hand, near Fukushima, of course, but then uh, the radioactive um, went uh, far away uh, in the ocean. And studies, they might be difficult to do, but they should uh, they should be done. Uh, and uh, in to China and uh, to Korea, uh, the radioactive releases were very, very low. It mostly really, uh, there is the, these mountains uh, in Japan from north to south, so it was halted, sort of. If we have no more questions from working, we do, please. Martin Kulling with the German Financial Daily Handelsblatt. Uh, could you uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, how long you will stay and what uh, you will do in the rest of your stay here in Japan. And uh, yeah, did you also talk to the government about your proposals and what w was the answer so far for increased uh, studies? Mm -hmm. uh, I only had the time uh, to come one week uh, to Japan. And uh, what I did was uh, meet with doctors in uh, Osaka and in Kyoto and uh, with different activist groups in, in Nagoya and um, also again uh, in Osaka and uh, here in Tokyo and to, to uh, talk to some journalists. Um, I have not been able to talk to the, uh, to the government. I would have liked uh, to talk to the government and especially to TEPCO and the Ministry of Health. Uh, but um, it is a pity. Uh, on one hand, I don't have enough time. I'm a doctor working in Germany. I have my own praxis uh, there and uh, couldn't get so much time off. Uh, and also um, our connections uh, to the Japanese government and um, to the uh, Ministry of Health uh, between IPP and W uh, Germany and uh, between the government, uh, they are not really established yet. There are good connections, as I know, between the Japanese uh, um, section of IPP and W, but um, the Japanese section is not interested in Fukushima. That's too bad. <laughs> He's asking for elaboration, please. Uh, uh, I can, uh, well, we had our um, Congress, a World Congress in uh, Hiroshima in 2012, and the Japanese section did not want uh, to talk about Fukushima, and a lot of other sections uh, from the world IPPNW did want to talk about Fukushima, and uh, among each other we had a big struggle, and in the end um, we could uh, talk uh, about uh, Fukushima too, not only uh, the uh, Japanese um, the Japanese section is talking um, and thinking a lot and uh, doing scientific works about Hiroshima and Hiroshima health effects and the doctors that work there are mostly professors from these universities of Hiroshima, Nagasaki and so on which uh, do their work uh, there. 
and uh, other uh, reasons. The Japanese do not tell often the real reasons, so <laughs> I cannot say any more. If there are no more questions from Working Press, I'd like to open up the floor to the uh, general guests. Uh, hello, my name is Yasushio Izumi from uh, Sentaku Shupan. Uh, I would like to ask you when uh, will you come back to Japan next time and what you, you will do then? Uh, I haven't decided yet <laughs> when to come back to uh, Japan. This is my uh, third uh, visit to Japan uh, and I visited Fukushima region twice uh, and talked there with doctors uh, from uh, medical polyclinics uh, that deal with uh, patients uh, from Fukushima uh, and went to uh, to the zone, uh, the 20 kilometer zone and to Koryama and to some villages and with uh, the help of a Japanese friend of mine I could go uh, together with a man who was evacuated to go and look at his house uh, um, maybe I come back <laughs> in a year or so, I don't know. But I definitely want to come back uh, because I ha we have good friends here and I, I do a lot of networking. And we will have a congress on Fukushima and Chernobyl in the end of February, uh, February uh, 26 to tw uh, 28 in Berlin. And there we have invited uh, some uh, Japanese um, people. Also Professor Tsuda will speak there. We are very happy that he uh, can come and uh, some other uh, people. And we talked there about Chernobyl and Fukushima, but also about some somewhat about alternative, the alternative uh, for nuclear energy like renewable energy. If I could ask a follow-up question based on your question. Um, Looking at back at your work uh, in Chernobyl for the past 30 years, uh, you shared with us today about your concern for nuclear workers. Where do you see, in your future trips coming back to Japan, where do you see your, uh, your work focusing as the years go on? Uh, we, uh, we want to focus, uh, uh, this is a good idea to contact the Ministry of Health and uh, the Japanese um, government and focus on our um, on what we want that really uh, all the contaminated uh, people will get health check uh, health checkups uh, and uh, can do something for their health and that there is an independent uh, way uh, of controlling uh, making these health checkups I think the independent uh, there's also this we have also this problem in in Germany and in Europe uh, that some of the uh, specialists are not so much independent and um, are very much government uh, speaking or IAO speaking uh, which is a, in a big uh, UN organization that is interested in promoting nuclear energy <laughs> So one has to be careful, and uh, we want to urge uh, that really these health checkups um, uh, are done, and that they are paid by the insurance or by the government or what body soever, which would be uh, what would be appropriate, and that people that are uh, sick uh, can get early enough medical help. This is our main uh, our main object. Yes, my name is Joël Lejean from uh, French Television and Radio, RTL, VFM TV. Um, I think your project uh, drove you to Japan already in the past, as you said. Uh, you came in 2012, I think, to make some picture, uh, lecture in, uh, in Japan. And uh, you are, uh, your project is uh, driven under the uh, uh, framework of Mr. Sebastian Prugbel, if mm -hmm, I'm right, right. Um, who has made some very critical statements about Mr. Uh, um, Bonazewski. 
you know? Uh, Mr. Who? Bandazewski, you remember Mr. Bandazewski, who was uh, Bandazewski. Yes, Bandazewski. Yeah. He is very critical of what he yes, said. Yes, right? I know. Mm. Um, so I'd like to know. I mean, uh, what's your funding? What's your research? And um, uh, what is exactly your line? Because we discover since five years that there are so many scientists who come to Japan um, and who don't have the same agreements on on the situation. For instance. Um, are there enough sampling for the thyroid? Are there any ca enough kids who've been checked about the situation for their thyroid? Are we, do are we doing enough sampling? Uh, scientists don't have the same opinions. Some people say, um, we can detect better today the, the disease than we could before to try to lower the risk that Fukushima provoked here. So my question is, uh, what exactly is your line of action? What is your organization exactly doing? And, uh, and what do you aim at, frankly speaking? Because we don't know who to trust very much in Japan yes. about this Fukushima issue. Yes, yes. Thank you. I think you're funded by a Christian organization? No, no, no. no, no. We, are f we are funded by ourselves. We are funded by our members. Uh, in Germany, uh, we have a membership uh, between 6,000 6, to 7,000 doctors and medical students, but mostly mostly doctors and we uh, our members pay fees every month and this is a way how we are funded and then uh, second way we are funded sometimes we do political work and people want uh, to give us money for our um, helping the anti-nuclear movement uh, in Germany you know that there is a, a strong anti-nuclear movement in Germany and we are part of this anti-nuclear movement and we are um, trying to give uh, to give them scientific uh, support. Uh, as for uh, as for our medical work, uh, we believe in <laughs> in the medical studies. And when we look at the Chernobyl uh, studies, um, uh, we try to uh, the best we can do. We are we are not uh, everybody can fail, but we try the best we can do to uh, um, to um, evaluate it from a medical uh, point of view. Uh, Bandashevsky, as I know, uh, he was uh, he did research on um, on um, pediatric patients and on the heart and heart disease uh, and uh, in in pediatric patients. And uh, his approach to do this uh, thing was is very good, I think, uh, because uh, cesium goes into the muscle. It means uh, it goes into the heart muscle and it goes into the other muscles too. And he saw these uh, children that were all had heart sicknesses, and he wanted to find something. Uh, I talked to uh, Sebastian Flugbeil about uh, Bandashevsky. And um, Sebastian Flugbeil told me uh, that Bandashevsky uh, did some. I, I didn't read his uh, the Bandashevsky's whole uh, whole study because it's in Russian and I cannot uh, I cannot speak Russian, understand Russian. I only uh, uh, read a small uh, what you say a small part uh, overview. Uh, so uh, ban, uh, Sebastian Flugbeil said that uh, his uh, scientific methods were not so good. Uh, they could have been better, but he he was on a good way, and then he was put into prison, and he couldn't uh, go on. So mm, I cannot say more more about that. And the other study said uh, when uh, we made the Chernobyl day, uh, update, this is the part I was doing uh, for our um, uh, study, is that we try to use when we find studies, um, we t uh, try to find are there other s other studies in a different um, environment which show similar effects. And uh, when you find when you have a medical study and you only have one medical study, uh, this is often not enough. You have uh, to understand what are discrepancies between different studies, uh, and so we we try to do it the best we can. But we also in our overview we use studies that uh, were not in um, these uh, peer-reviewed journals. It is difficult in, uh, to get into peer-reviewed journals. 
and some of studies that could are good uh, and could be evaluated or could made better uh, are not in these um, peer-reviewed studies. For instance, Yevgenia Stepanova, who uh, did studies on the blood cells, she did them very early. Uh, and then, uh, by chance, uh, the he uh, she met uh, was uh, after the '95 or so. She met with um, epidemiologists uh, from the United States, and they ha must have had a good uh, critical methodological discussion. And then they said to do a common work and add some good uh, epidemiological methods and uh, together with Svensson and then they found the same together with Svensson and uh, Yevgenia Stepanova what Stepanova has found before uh, uh, because in the Soviet Union uh, the epidemiological methods were not the same as in um, uh, as in, in the West they always after Chernobyl uh, they had this method before Chernobyl and after Chernobyl. <laughs> we look before and after, and this, this is enough. Of course, it's not enough. Uh, but uh, if doctors in this region find the same and same clinical um, phenomena again and again in their patients, you have to take it serious, and then you should uh, do better studies on the same phenomena and try to find out if you get to the same result, in the beginning with your uh, not so good uh, <laughs> methods or not. So uh, this is the way we try to, to understand. And if we make mistakes, we are open for discussion. <laughs> Martin Kulling again. Uh, you mentioned the medical studies, mm -hmm. um, but they are focusing on yeah, diseases of the body, basically. What about psychological uh, fallout, basically? Are there studies on that, too? Because living in, in an environment where you, even a low-dose environment, where you're not, you can't be sure, I guess, has also some uh, uh, consequences on, the, on psycholo psychological issues. Mm -hmm. Are there studies there? There are studies, uh, different studies, uh, but I have I have not uh, to be open. I have not uh, looked into these uh, different studies uh, on that. I'm myself a psychologist, uh, psychiatrist, and psychotherapist. And uh, when I uh, here in uh, in Fukushima province, when I traveled around, uh, I also uh, talked uh, with self-help groups. Uh, mothers uh, with their children, uh, and yesterday evening I talked to a couple with their with their children who evacuated themselves on Fukushima. This is only an impression, I say, as a, a psychotherapist. Of course, um, living uh, in um, in an environment uh, with low dose radiation and was a government to be clear that does not give good information to the people this uh, uh, this makes the um, uncertainness on on the issue uh, heighten up uh, it gets higher and higher and this uh, it is uh, this uncertainty is uh, is very problematic of course to live in in, in such a um, in such a situation to live with radiation. We don't have a situation after uh, Fukushima, but we have a situation with living with Fukushima. And the people that uh, uh, make their decisions, if they want to evacuate themselves or not, uh, they have to decide what is more important for them. And uh, the people that decide to stay in Fukushima, in the province, uh, as I understood, have only very different and very uh, understandable personal reasons. Uh, if you have to give up your work and you get very poor, <laughs> of course you want to stay where you have, uh, you can you, you, where you can make a living, <coughs> and where you can have a work and can earn money. Or if you have a, 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 a grandfather or a grandmother that has to be looked after. You will not want uh, maybe to uh, 
uh, to get away from uh, from uh, your very dear ones and you feel the responsibility to look after them and then it uh, often might be more comfortable for your soul to stay there and to be able to uh, to help your parents and uh, to cook meals for them or whatsoever and uh, i also understood that a lot of uh, Fukushima uh, couples uh, div were divorced because uh, the woman wanted to go with the children and the man wanted to stay and uh, uh, has to earn money uh, and these are very uh, uncomfortable and stressful very stressful uh, situations to live with and if we would do a study on that of course we uh, would find some sort of stress uh, stress and stress management and if I would be a doctor here uh, I would go to the people and help them uh, to um, to better get um, uh, yeah, accept their stress and to manage uh, do a better stress management so I understand very much uh, that the situation is very complicated and there are no easy answers Uh, sorry, uh, we, we could have somebody ask a question for the first time, please. Uh, I've opened the floor. Uh, sorry, um, Jan, how many can serve thyroid in Fukushima? The current figures, uh, you know, I don't have them in front of me. Does anybody know? It's 117. So, it? Dr. Clausen, can we say that five years after the Fukushima accident, those cancers are linked to the radiation from the accident? Uh, we, um, when we made a study on um, Fukushima, uh, we took the uh, official WHO um, figures of radiation and uh, then you can from this official radiation so and so sievert was uh, uh, got down on so and so many people. Uh, you have uh, uh, a figure that's called man doses sievert and then you add it with a factor and if you do this work which we did in our study add it with a B E B E I R 7 factor uh, then we got uh, to uh, uh, 48,000 cancer cases these uh, similar studies were done in the beginning of Chernobyl uh, where also uh, different uh, scientists uh, said so and so many men sievert was uh, got out and uh, went down on so and so many people uh, and so and so many cancer deaths and cancer um, morbidity we will have. Uh, the difference uh, to uh, to Chernobyl is uh, that the real amount of the, uh, um, the radioactive inventory is not clear still now. Uh, there is there are still a lot of questions on the radiation effect on Fukushima, but a little bit less maybe <laughs> than on Chernobyl. Uh, specifically relating to. Um uh, pediatric thyroid cancer, which uh, is your question, right? No, it's I, mean, like uh, uh, I think it's 150 now. Is it? Uh, uh, I got a, a number yesterday, uh, as I remember, 100. But uh, these uh, figures change. Um, I don't know if they were cancer case, thyroid case, suspicions uh, or not. So you have to look uh, into the Fukushima Health Survey and on the last dates. very much. My name is Toshiyuki Sato. I was a uh, foreign cons correspondent of Japanese media and I'd like to show that uh, uh, the company I work for showed the uh, documentary on Japanese uh, uh, two uh, med medical doctors who, who, who were in Chernobyl many years mm -hmm. and uh, there were some uh, contradicting, let's just say, uh, mm -hmm. uh, understandings of uh, the findings you made. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, still, uh, my question is uh, partly asked by the gentleman over there, uh, is that uh, uh, although the data or, or scientific data uh, that Japanese uh, are gathering are uh, limited, uh, did you find any, uh, any, what you say, warning bells or uh, 
or any any dangerous uh, uh, elements uh, uh, based upon judging uh, from your uh, experiences in Chernobyl. Th that is my question. Uh, well, I would like to ask the question back. Are 130 or 150 thyroid cancer cases in the Fukushima province, are they not enough warning bell? I think they are. If, uh, can you come uh, can you come into the mic please? I did not really I uh, get what you want. <laughs> so no. Sorry, uh, I think in Japan there's a kind of uh, over pessimism one side and there's over optimism. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what you said, what you observed uh, was a kind of uh, warning bell to us. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have uh, enough, or the scientific enough attitude to uh, check what, what is really going on. And uh, uh, the same is here about uh, the judging the uh, numbers of uh, child typhoid cancers. Some people say it's not much different from the background. And some people say it's very much different. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So the background... Uh worldwide on child, uh, child thyroid cancer is uh, per million one to two cases. And uh, here we have 400,000 children uh, between zero and 18 years old. And we have 130 or 150 now cases. So this really is a difference. And uh, this is a warning bell. And uh, uh, we can make a, uh, or scientists can make a scientific discussion. What are the, uh, how many, uh, how much is the number of the thyroid cancers that uh, we can relate with radiation? But um, uh, there, of course, there must be a scientific uh, discussion on that. But I want to uh, remind you that the study that is done and that is going on from the Fukushima uh, prefecture from the medical hospital, university hospital there, is made in the situation that the accident had been there. It had, it, it happened and the study started after the accident. So we have no, uh, we have as a background figure we have to use general numbers we know from other studies, from worldwide studies and so on. Uh, and uh, in the discussion now, uh, what's uh, discussed is, oh, the first uh, screening round is the prevalence. Prevalence is the, um, the amount of uh, cancers that come uh, in the beginning, that's the background. But now we have this background with radiation and with uh, uh, children that uh, got no tablets, of, uh, there was a radioactive iodine and the, the tablets weren't given to them. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> I have a lot of questions on that. Uh, uh, I'm not the best <laughs> thyroid expert, really, I'm not. But still I have my questions. I'm afraid that we're out of time. Perhaps this can be the last question, please. How long will the radiation um, threat, if that's the right word, persist for? Presumably it's peaked and over a number of years will diminish. How long will it take for the radiation levels to fall to levels where they're insignificant? And also you mentioned the impact on aquatic life in the Pacific Ocean. Your concern there is with effects through the food mm. chain, presumably. Mm. Uh, it depends on the radionuclide we have, uh, um, radioactive iodine. Uh, has uh, a half-life of eight days, so uh, it is uh, it vanishes very quick. But once it's in your body, it's inhaled and uh, uh, it's taken up into the and accumulated in the thyroid. And when it's there, it's there. It doesn't go away, uh, and it makes uh, a damage. So uh, you have to understand that once the, uh, the radionuclease is in your body and has done its damage there, the effect comes. Uh, of course, in the body they are, uh, I'm still dealing with, uh, uh, with uh, iodine, there are reparation mechanisms. 
but if the m amount of radioactive uh, iodine is much, then these uh, reparation mechanisms cannot, uh, they are too weak. Now cesium, you ask the question how long the uh, radioactive particles are there. Cesium has a, a half-life uh, of um, 30 years. So it takes to completely vanish, it takes 300 years. And uh, we have other uh, radiation particles uh, uh, like strontium or like plutonium uh, that uh, have uh, gone into the uh, into the environment. Plutonium has a half life of twenty four thousand years, and uranium has an even longer half life. So it depends on the radionuclide we talk about, and we. Uh, we usually uh, only take in account uh, like uh, strontium, cesium, and iodine because they are the main ones. Well, I would like to um, thank Dr. Clausen for taking the time out of her trip here in Japan to be with us here at the Press Club. I don't think there is um, going to be any, any resolution, unfortunately, and I'm afraid that we will be having uh, press conferences like this for many years to come and there are differing opinions and we look forward to having um, our guests come here to help us um, figure out what all this information means. So thank you all very much for being here today and thank you to the Foreign Press Club of Japan for uh, hosting this press conference. Thank you.